Suppose there are 28 injection syringes in a box and each time a nurse walks into the room, she picks up 4 syringes and walks out. The question is, how many nurses can each pick up 4 syringes before the box is empty? So basically you start with the number 28. The first nurse comes in, picks up 4, the new number in the box is 28 minus 4. The second nurse walks in, picks up another 4 syringes and walks out and now there are 28 minus 4 minus 4 syringes left in the box. The third nurse walks in, she picks up her share of 4 injection syringes and walks out. So now there are 28 minus 4 minus 4 syringes left in the box. Let me rephrase the question and now say, how many nurses can this box serve before it runs out of stock? So essentially it's about subtracting a bunch of 4s from 28 until you can subtract no more. So you keep doing this, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4. So that the answer reduces to 0 or a number you cannot take away 4 from. And another way to write this is 28 divided with 4. So what's 28 divided with 4? The answer is the same as the number of times you can subtract 4 starting with 28. So you do 28 minus 4, you get 24. You do 24 minus 4, you get 20. You do 20 minus 4, you get 16, right? You do 16 minus 4, you get 12. You do 12 minus 4, you get 8. You do 8 minus 4, you get 4. And finally, you can do 4 minus 4 and you end up with 0. So we could do the subtraction 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. And therefore, 28 divided with 4 or 28 divided by 4 is equal to 7. Remember multiplication was about adding the same number? Division, which is also called the opposite of multiplication, is about subtracting the same number. You could also think of division in another way. Imagine you have a big box of injection syringes. And let's say there are 45 syringes in this box. There are five smaller boxes named A, B, C, D and E. And your job is to put those 45 syringes from the big box into the five smaller boxes so that each of the boxes A, B, C, D and E have the same number of syringes. There are two ways to approach this problem. Number one is to pick box and put some of these syringes into this box and hope you can put the same number in the other boxes as well. But if you aren't good with numbers, you won't know how many of those 45 syringes will go into each one of these boxes. Remember, they all need to have the same number of syringes. So the second approach is to have all the boxes A, B, C, D and E all at one place together. And instead of filling up one box at a time, put the first syringe in box A, the second one in box B, the third one in C, the fourth in D, the fifth in E, and then again the sixth one in A, the seventh in B, the eighth in C, and so on. You obviously stop when the large box is empty. Or to be more accurate, when there isn't enough number of syringes in the large box to be put into each one of these smaller boxes. So the number in A plus the number in B plus the number in C, plus the number in D, plus the number in E should add up to 45. For the time being, let's say there's no leftover syringes in the big box. We're going to talk about leftover in a little while from now. So let's say all these five numbers 
add up to exactly 45. And let's also keep in mind that all these numbers are equal, which means the same number is being added to itself. And that's multiplication. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have 5 times a number represented by this rectangle. So let me draw the rectangle here. So 5 times this number, whatever that number is, is equal to 45. The question is 5 times what is 45? And if you know your tables, you'd come to realize this number has to be 9 because 5 times 9 is 45. So each box has got 9 syringes in it. So this is just like saying we have 5 groups of 9 in each group. So that's 5 times 9. Recall that in the multiplication sentence 5 times 9 is equal to 45. 5 and 9 are the two factors. So 5 is a factor. 9 is a factor. And the factors multiply to give you the product, which is 45. And if you do not know any one of the two factors, we didn't know this 9. So we were thinking 5 times what is 45? That's about dividing. So you divide the product, 45 in this case, Divide that with the given factor 5 to find out the other factor. We say 45 divided by 5 is 9. And in this division sentence, 45, the number you are dividing, is called the dividend. The number you are dividing with, that is one of the factors in the multiplication sentence, is called the divisor. And the answer to the division, that is the unknown factor from multiplication, is called the quotient. And obviously, if 5 was not given, and if I were to ask you, okay, what times 9 is 45, write that down as a division in this way. 45 divided by 9 is equal to 5. This is how the three numbers are related. Similarly, 40 divided with 8 is equal to 5 because 8 times 5 is equal to 40. Try and relate this multiplication sentence to this division sentence. A number can be broken apart and divided in parts using the distributive property as we did in multiplication. Remember how 3 times 125 is the same as 3 times 100 plus 3 times 20 plus 3 times 5? So basically you break this number apart into 3 parts. You don't have to break it up into 3 pieces. You can go for more pieces or even less. And you could have plus or minus over here. So in this case, I chose to break it apart as a 100 plus a 20 plus a 5. And then multiply each one of these with 3. And this is something we already learned in our multiplication lesson. And the good thing is, you can apply the same technique with division. So if you want to do, let's say, 639 divided with 3. In other words, you want to know 3 times what is 639. Or, let's say you have 3 groups, each group having the same number, and they add up to 639. You want to find out how many would go into each group. So this is the division you want to do. And you can break this number apart as you choose fit. I'm going to go for 600 plus 30 plus 9. And then divide each one of these with 3. 600 divided with 3 is 2 hundreds. I just did 6 divided with 3. I got a 2 and I put back the two zeros. Plus 30 divided with 3 is 10. 
plus 9 divided by 3 is 3. So the answer is 200 plus 10 plus 3, which is 213. So this is 213. Like I said, you don't have to use a plus over here. You can break apart the number in any way you choose. Something that's easy for you to work with, especially if you're doing mental math. For example, if you want to do 152 divided with 8, it's a great idea to break this 152 down into 160 minus 8 and then divide this with 8, this with 8. And it becomes so easy. I divide 16 with 8. I have a 2. I put back the 0 because the answer is going to be more than 2 because the dividend is 10 times what I did. I use 16 but the dividend actually is 10 times that. So the answer is also going to be 10 times that. 10 times 2 is 20. And then minus 8 divided by 8 is 1. So this answer is 19. Easily done. And this way of breaking down a number and dividing it in parts is what we use in long division. Let's see a few examples at work. Let's try and divide 845 with 5. So you want to know 5 times what is going to give you 845. Or if you have 5 equal size groups, that add up to 845 what is the number in each group so what times 5 is 845 same thing said in a different way or let's say you know each group has got 5 in it 5 5 5 so how many 5s how many groups of 5 can you fit into 845? So pretty much doing this repeated subtraction. All these situations lead you to the same division problem 845 divided by 5. So let's see how to do this. You write down the number 845 that is the dividend. Put the division sign. It's like this. Write the divisor outside it and then start dividing. So this is what you do. And remember, starting from the right, we have the ones place, we have the tens place, we have the hundreds place, and so on. So the first question you ask yourself is, how many five hundreds will fit into eight hundred? And the answer is, there's only one 500 that fits into 800. So we write a 1 over here. And then multiply 5 with 100 to get a 500. We don't write 500, we just write 5 below the 8. This is the hundreds place, so this 5 indicates a 500. So out of the 800, we take out 500. That part is being divided. So essentially we are breaking down the 845 and dividing it in parts. 500 gone. Subtract 8 minus 5. You have 3, which means 300s are still left. In the next step, well, you cannot say that even 1 500 will fit into 300. So at this point, you need to bring this one down. So you have a 4. Bring this down. This becomes a 34. This looks like a 34, but as you can see, the 3 is under the hundreds place and the 4 is under the tens place. So this is actually a 340. And then now the question is, how many 5 tens? Now what is 5 tens? That's 50. So how many 5 tens or how many 50s will fit into 340? In other words, it's pretty much about dividing 34 with 5. It will give you the same answer. And then as you know your tables, 5 times 6 is 30, 5 times 7 is 35. That's over 34. So you write a 6 here to indicate, well, we can fit in 
six five tenths or six fifties into three hundred forty, and that gives you how much? What six fifties? Six times fifty is three hundred. So you write a three under the hundreds place, and zero on the tens place. Pretty much write down thirty, and then subtract. So we have this leftover of three hundred forty. We haven't looked at the five as yet. Out of the three hundred forty, three hundred has been divided. Leftover is forty. In other words, you subtract. You do thirty-four minus thirty. You get a four. This four, being under the tens place, is actually a forty. And then it's time for us to bring this five down from the ones place. So we are left with forty-five. And now the question is, how many five ones, or how many fives? Five times one is five. How many fives will fit into forty-five? Or five times what is forty-five? The answer is five times nine is forty-five. Therefore, we could fit nine five ones into forty-five, and five times nine is forty-five. And now, forty-five minus forty-five is zero. So, although we have broken down eight hundred forty-five into pieces, but we ended up dividing all of it with five, and the answer is one hundred sixty-nine. So, we could say eight forty-five divided by five. Is one hundred sixty-nine. Let's do another one. Let's say you want to divide three hundred fifty-four with six. Take the leftmost digit on the dividend and try and divide it with the divisor. The leftmost digit is three, but six can divide three. So you take the next digit and make it a thirty-five. Can six divide thirty-five? Yes, of course it can. Six times five is thirty, and six times six is thirty-six, which is over thirty-five. Therefore, you're going to write a five over here, above this five, where this thirty-five ends, the last digit on thirty-five. Start there. Write a five. Multiply the divisor with whatever you have written down on the top. So multiply six with five. Get a thirty. Write it below the thirty-five. Subtract. Thirty-five minus thirty is five. Next, bring down this four. Bring down one digit at a time. Therefore, we have a fifty-four here. And repeat the same steps. So the question to be asked is: six times what is fifty-four? Or what's fifty-four divided by six? And the answer is nine. Therefore, you write a nine next to the five on the top, above this four. And because six times nine is fifty-four, when you subtract, you don't have anything left over. There is no other digit to bring down, so we have come to the end of the problem. Three hundred fifty-four divided with six is fifty-nine. If you want to check if you got this right. Remember, you can always turn a division sentence to a multiplication sentence. Multiply the divisor with the quotient. So multiply six with fifty-nine. If you get this back, if you get the dividend back, which is three hundred fifty-four, you got it right. Now this is for problems that don't have a leftover over here. The leftover is zero. The last subtraction gives you a zero, and there's nothing to bring down. When there is a number over here that six can divide, that's something called a remainder. We are going to talk about it in a moment. But for the time being, when you subtract, you get a zero, and there's no other digit to bring down. This should work. The quotient times the divisor should give you the dividend. If you get that, you got it right. Otherwise, you got it wrong. Let's try another one. How about、uh, trying to divide, let's say, seven thousand? One hundred sixty-eight with seven. Start from the leftmost digit on the dividend. Try and divide it with the divisor. So divide this seven with this seven. You get a one. Where do you write the one? Not here. Not here. Not here. But right above what you have divided. So write a one above this seven. 
multiply 7 times 1 is 7, write it down, subtract 7 minus 7 is 0, bring down this 1 and repeat the same steps. So try and divide 0, 1 or simply 1 with 7. Can you divide 1 with 7? No, you can't. Therefore, you write a 0 over here to indicate that 0 sevens will go into a 1. Then multiply 7 with 0. 7 times 0 is 0. So you can write a 0 over here and subtract. 1 minus 0 is 1. So you have the same number and then bring down the 6. Sometimes you could just do that in one step. The moment you see a 1 over here and you know that 1 can't be divided with 7 because 1 is smaller than 7, you write a 0 and instead of going through the multiplication of 7 times 0, which obviously is 0, and subtracting to get the same number over here, you just want to, after you write the 0 over here, just want to bring down the 6 and write it over here perhaps. It's the same thing. So now it's time for us to divide 16 with 7. We know that 7 times 1 is 7, 7 times 2 is 14, 7 times 3 is 21. So therefore 21 is over 16. So we don't write a 3 over here, we write a 2. Write down 14 because 7 times 2 is 14. Subtract 16 minus 14 is 2 and then bring this 8 down to make it a 28. 28 divided by 7 is 4 because 7 times 4 is 28. And it seems like we have come to the end of the problem because when you multiply 7 with 4, you get 28. Subtract, you get a 0 and not only that, there is no other digit over here. So then we could say that 7168 divided with 7 is 1024. As always, don't forget to check. Multiply 1024 with 7, you get back 7168. If you don't, you got your division wrong. And here's another one. 8036 divided with 4. Start from the left. Can 4 divide 8? Yes, of course, 4 times 2 is 8. Write the 2 over here on top of the 8. Multiply 4 with 2. You get 8. Subtract. So you have a 0 or nothing. Bring down the second digit which is also a 0. So you have 0, 0. Can 4 divide 0? Well, 4 can divide 0. So 4 times 0 is 0. And then, like I said in the previous example, there's no point in multiplying 4 with 0, writing a 0 over here and subtracting 0 from 0. Straight away, you can bring down this 3 and make it a 3. Now can 4 divide 3? 0, 0, 3 is the same as 3. Can 4 divide 3? 3 is smaller than 4, therefore 4 can divide 3. So you write another 0 over here to indicate 4 times 0 is going to give you 0 which is less than 3. So after that, you can bring down this 6 over here. You brought down this 3, of course, in this step. Bring down the 6 to make it a 36. And ask yourself, can 4 divide 36? Yes, it can. 4 times 9 is 36. So finally, after a whole bunch of zeros, you got a number. You got a digit. So subtract, you get a 0. There's nothing to bring down. End of the problem. So we could say 8,000. 36 divided by 4 is 2009.